Hey, it's Nathan Silo from Oakcroft Films with another edition of Autism Actually Speaking. So today we're going to talk about one of the most difficult things when it comes to being autistic, self-advocacy in middle school. My last Autism Actually Speaking video, which was a year ago, sorry about that, uh, I talked about self-advocacy in general, and I mainly focused on adults. However, I got a response from someone who wanted to know how that changed when you were in middle school. Middle school is the time where people are starting to establish their own identity. They're starting to understand the world in more in-depth ways. Hormones, testosterone, estrogen, puberty, things like that. This may also be the time where all of your peers start to pressure you into conforming to a certain set of social standards. And if you're like me, it's also the time that you actually find out that you have Asperger's slash autism, which can be a problem, because if there's one thing that autistics tends to really not like, it's conformity. My first tip would be to stay true to who you are. Don't sacrifice your identity just to fit into a group or make friends or hang out with people. Because odds are, if you have to change who you are to get someone to like you, you won't really like them. And you won't be happy while you're with them. For example, I'm not a huge fan of football but all my peers seemed to be. So I tried to like it, I tried to learn about it, I tried to talk about it, but at the end of the day, I just felt empty. I felt fake. Don't let that happen to you. You're unique. Don't let a middle school take that away from you. My second tip would be how to identify to your peers your identity as an autistic. Now, some people might prefer to be private about their autism, which is totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. However, I would recommend at least telling your closest friends about it. You know, letting them know how it affects you, what it does. However, I personally think that it's best to be open about it. Autism affects the way people behave. So explaining to your peers, I'm autistic and sometimes that affects my ability to communicate, can go a long way. Some kids will still be a jerk no matter what, and there's nothing you can do about them. However, most kids will probably cut you some slack if they know that it's a condition that you can't help. Before I got Sylvia, I never told people about it. The only people that knew were my closest friends. But after I got her and I started being more open about it and I started telling more and more people, I actually had a few apologize to me for how they had treated me before they knew. My final tip is to learn about neurotypicals. Don't change who you are. But keep in mind that the neurotypical brain works very differently from the autistic brain. And sometimes, you might need to accommodate. Now, they may behave strange sometimes. It might be weird that they have this obsession with talking about the weather, and sometimes it might seem like they're the disabled ones. But if you're willing to accommodate them, they're more likely to accommodate you. I'm not going to lie and say that middle school is going to be easy. It's not. But it's also the time that you start to develop who you are, who you want to be, and the type of people that you want around you. And as you establish this identity, you establish your own opinions. So study those who came before you, and then develop your own brand of self-advocacy. You're never too young to get involved with neurodiversity. You're never too young for your opinion to matter. So don't hide it. If you have any questions or topics you'd like addressed, please leave them in the comments below, or message me on my Facebook, also linked below. And remember, if you've been eating two eggs and three pieces of bacon every morning for the last two years and you're still not tired of them, you might be autistic.